Top, top, top of the morning, the afternoon, and the evening. It's the Wayne World Podcast. You know what it is. We're going to get that raw. We're going to get that real, that uncut. Fizzo, fizzo, fizzo. You know it's your boy, Ambo. Fizzo, fizzo, fizzo. You know it's your boy, Ambo. Boy, don't act like you don't know we love God. Fizzo, fizzo, fizzo. Jip, jip. Fizzo, fizzo, fizzo. Let's get into it. You know what I'm talking about? Top, top, top of the morning, afternoon, and the evening to you, whoever you may be, wherever you may be watching, looking, or listening. It's your boy, Aunt Mo. Trevor Narabando. Whoa, let me eat with your big baby. Welcome to Wayne's Words, my middle name. You know what I'm talking about? Listen, it's been a couple weeks for all of those who have been around, all the Wayneyacks, all the people who have been rocking with your boy. You've been consistent. And I thank you for it. And we back. The the wait is over. Season three is here. And we about to do what we came to do. You know what I'm talking about? And so, for all of those people who may be wondering, what is the Wayne's World Podcast about? It's a real life podcast for real life people, simply put. Um, listen, I always say that it is for the millennial and generation X Christian, right? And then from there, anybody who want to lend a little dirty ear to the podcast can listen. You know what I'm saying? Um... And, and, and the podcast for today, I wanted to do a theme for, you know, kicking off season three. And I wanted it to be entitled Trust Issues. And so for the next four weeks, what we're going to do is every week we're going to have something that's dealing with a different type of trust issue, right? The title will be different, but the the actual theme of it will be the same and we will come to some type of conclusion at the end of it so there's a lot of things that have been going on and i wanted to make sure that i keep my people informed so for those of you who have been listening and been rocking with your boy like i said my faithful waniacs man the roadcaster is here if you look from this angle you can see down here that we are definitely rocking and rolling with the with the roadcaster uh we have the road pod mic you know what I'm talking about? I got the laptop, which I've had for a while now because I was gearing up for this time. And so the idea will be get you a couple of different angles in editing. I don't know exactly how I'm going to work the sound just yet, but we are going to get you what you are looking for. You know what I'm talking about? And so, like I said, man, season two, we wanted to end it. You know what I'm saying? Because... I don't know, man. Like, I, I wasn't feeling that normal, I got to give you this. You know, it may have been that I needed a break. I mean, I, was, I went for about 16, 17 weeks strong. And listen, I know there's people out there who do much more than that. But for me, I just made up that decision. I was going to take a break. And I was waiting to get the Roadcaster because even this intro, shout out to Brandon Owens who got it to me, Oh Boy Productions and... You know, all of that. It may actually be tough tunes, tough, something like that. I, my my apologies, my brother. I will have everything tagged in the um, in the uh, show notes. But, yeah, man, shout out to him because he did the intro months ago and I haven't been able to use it because I didn't have the, the, the things that I need. And to answer my boy TJ's question or his response, yes, I am very happy with it. I have not had the time to do what it is that I wanted to do. Uh, just because family, you know what I'm saying? Like having a, a, a wife and a kid, it takes up your time. And so, you know, it is what it is. But I am very happy to be able to have this and to give you guys what you need. And so this is my declaration to you all. Moving forward, there will be no going in, in great depth about what we do or why we do it. Because the people that have been rocking with me, Y'all fully understand why I do what I do. You guys have been listening. You have went back and binge listened. You guys are faithful listeners. I mean, I can count on, even if I don't say anything, if I don't post to social media, I can count on 10 people. And and I'm not tripping over humble beginnings of small potatoes because they can still keep you fed. You know what I'm talking about? But, um, yeah, I'm not going to trip on who doesn't listen or who doesn't click on the link. I'm going to focus my attention on the people who have been rocking with your boy. You know what I'm talking about? And so with that being said, uh, 
You know what I'm saying? We're going to move forward, man. I want to get into some randomness with you. You know what I'm talking about? And so let's move right into that randomness. Uh, TJ will, will recall this conversation. It was about three weeks ago. We were at the job and I said, ah, man, um, bro, I don't know what it is, but I just got a feeling that my wife, like she, she going to get pregnant, bro. And he thought that I was making the declaration that she was at the time. And I was like, no, I don't have any grand, uh, you know, proof of it. Like when, before, uh, Ava got here, I just had the feeling that she was pregnant. Like, I don't know what it is, bro. I ain't got no crazy intuition or what, what have you, but I did just feel it in my shana that she was, she was going to get pregnant and it was true. And so to, uh, hit you with a clue bomb first, you know what I'm saying? So I can, I don't know if y'all, you know what? Let me, let me hit you with that one more time. Yeah. To hit you with that clue bomb. Um, Listen, man, there is another one being added to the family. There is another, hopefully there's an Xavier Carter Moore coming to the family. I love Samaya. I love Ava. They have my heart. Now it's time for somebody to have my balls. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I appreciate your prayers, man. My pullout game trash, dog. I'm going to just keep it all the way real with you. And I'm married, so ain't no need for me to pull out. But I'm just saying, dog, you know what I'm saying? There's another one on the way. My wife is a couple weeks in. And the funny thing is we was beefing beforehand. And and she was, you know, fellas, you know your ladies, you know your wives, you know, you know how, you know, that if, if y'all are in that type of relationship where y'all, y'all fuss and you fight and you, you know, you argue and all that, okay, that's fine. But that's not our, that's not our status. You know what I'm saying? We don't get down like that. And so she was real, real snappy, Kim Folk. I'm talking about she was she was coming at my neck one morning. And I was like, girl, girl, Kim Folk, I'm about to put my hands on you. You know what I'm talking about? And, uh, I, you know, obviously that's it wasn't real. But it was just like something was off. And, and it, it didn't feel right. And literally, like, a day or two later, we get the news. And so I'm just like, oh, I get the news. She left it on the counter because we still wasn't talking at the time. And uh, I'm looking. I call her. I'm like, uh. You know, she don't answer. Text me. Yeah, I'm at work. What's up? I'm like, man, quit playing with me, bro. You know you're not at work yet. So I'm like, so you pregnant? And she was like, is that a question? Or I'm like, dude, enough, Danny. Enough already. Like, we get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just chill. And so, you know what I'm saying? It was what it was. But um, beautiful thing, man. Glad to have an addition to the family. And the, this mosquito got the nerve to fly by me like that, Kim Folk. Chill out if I beat you up, dog. But anyway, yeah, man. So for this for this topic and randomness, man, your boy is adding another corona coronavirus baby to the to the mix. You know what I'm talking about? Old COVID nineteen baby. You know what I'm talking about? Gonna come out healthy and strong. You know what I'm talking about? So I will keep you guys updated on the gender and all those things for for those of you who are interested. You know what I'm saying? I am definitely excited and I'm happy and um. Uh, yeah, man, we're going to ride like that. You know what I'm talking about? So what we're going to do, you know what I'm saying, is we're going to take the time to throw a little break off in there. And when we come back, it's time for you to go get these sports, bro. You know what I'm talking about? Hum, bro. G- huh. And we back, and we back, in hell. Yeah. This ain't no intro. This that entree. Did that intro with Kanye and sound like Andre trying to turn my baby mama to my fiance. You know what I'm talking about? Welcome back. You know what I'm talking about? You gonna get these sports, bruh? You know what I'm saying? And um, you know what I'm saying? Like I ain't gonna lie, I'm still I'm still figuring out the board, which is still fun in itself, but it's been a joy. And um, you know, I'm gonna find a way to get make that as a drop, so we can just throw that in at the beginning of the. The sports segment, you know what I'm talking about? But without a shadow of a doubt, without further ado, let's get into it, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh-huh. So, yeah, man. Um, I was able to check out The Last Dance. For those of you who do not know what The Last Dance is, it was a documentary, a 10-part miniseries about 
uh, the one, the only Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and let's do something right now. Let's go ahead and take the mystique out of the entire segment and say Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. Not the most athletic, not the most smart, not the strongest. He is just simply the greatest basketball player that we have ever witnessed in our entire life. One of the things that stuck out to me the most was watching him play game six against the Jazz, and Scottie Pippen has a back spasm. Let's not forget, like, if we want to go ahead and take it back a little bit, Scottie Pippen had a couple situations where he got hurt and then he delayed the surgery. He had the migraines. You had the back spasms. You really didn't do much to help MJ. I mean, he was on the court. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he didn't help, but he didn't help. He wasn't at his best. And so the one thing that we can say about Jordan is that he has done some things at a disadvantage. I mean, listen, we can say what we want to say. But besides Pippen, I mean, yes, I know cool coaches in the as a basketball Hall of Famer. I get that. Rodman, I get it. But Rodman contributed nothing on the offensive end. And don't let's not argue offensive versus defensive boards. He contributed in that area. Everybody has a role to play. But to close out a phenomenal Utah Jazz team in a win or, you know, be forced to close it out in a game seven, we ain't seen Bron do that. I'm going to be real. We have yet to see LeBron close out like that. And this is not to hate on LeBron. Because my next statement is, one day soon, LeBron is going to pass Michael Jordan as the greatest basketball player. Not currently. He has to win one or two more ships. It has to make sense. He definitely played against some stiff competition. You know what I'm saying? When we talk about the Spurs, you know what I'm saying? And the Golden State Warriors, two of the greatest franchises. One's, one is the greatest franchise of all time, and the other is the greatest basketball team that we have ever seen assembled. But listen, bro, you had your chances to to do that. I mean, you was using or getting your tail kicked, bro. You know what I'm saying? In some key and pivotal finals moments. Let's recap really quick who he has beat in the championship with those three rings. OKC was a young, unorganized team at that point. Then we have the Spurs. Definitely you did your thing, you know what I'm saying? But oh, oh Ray, he bailed you out with that tray. You know what I'm saying? Ray Allen bailed you out with that tray. And then Golden State, let's not act like uh, Draymond Green didn't get, you know, kicked out for game five after the whole infamous uh, nut punch situation that shifted a lot of momentum and on top of that you still had um Kyrie do his thing so we're not I mean if we want to be real here if we really want to like add it up Jordan faced some pretty stiff competition whether you want to agree with it or not he still had to go through the Lakers he still had to go through the Pistons he still had to go through the Pacers he still had to go through the Utah Jazz he still had to go through the, uh, the Sonics who were still formidable opponents like I hate like the only one that I'm not mentioning is Portland and that's because I mean it's Portland bro you know what I'm saying it's not yeah if you to face Houston would that may have been a different thing sure but I can't sit up here and act like LeBron has really went through the gauntlet like that and I think if you guys would be honest with yourselves you would agree you know what I'm saying but at the end of the day like I said I really truly believe that Jordan will get surpassed by the great LeBron James. And why do I say that? Because all iconic players get surpa surpassed at some point. Bill Russell got surpassed. Wilt Chamberlain got surpassed. Julius Irvin got surpassed. Kareem got surpassed. Some already think Kobe is the greatest, even though they're sniffing glue. You know what I'm saying? That's an asinine statement, but I digress. So... If all of these great players have got surpassed, Jordan is standing the test of time because he has a few key things on his side, like he's never lost in the finals. You know what I'm saying? I mean, still has led the, I mean, leads in scoring. and I mean, he was just a fierce competitor. And so when you look at that, 
it's hard to still not give him the reason when he's getting doubled in championships by Jordan, LeBron is. You can't sit up and try to argue if he's the greatest. Not yet. Not yet. And he's running out of time. Like, don't get me wrong. We all know that LeBron has been doing his thing. This is a fact, Jack. Like, he's been doing his thing, but we can't give it to him just yet, Kimbo. So... I mean, you believe what you want to believe. That's just, that's just, that's just what I think. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I will say this. Mike was a smart man. Mike was a smart man. Y'all seen it? For those of you who watched it, listen. If he would have, listen, if he would have played the Pacers again, they would have beat the balls off that dude. If, if he would have played the Pacers again, he, they would have beat the balls off of him. If he'd have played the Jazz again, that that whole thing about him uh, winning seven, uh, y'all wasn't winning seven, bro. And, and that's not hindsight speaking here. This is just a reality that great things don't last. If you're if you played sports, if you've been in the gym and, and had a day where you might have shot eighty percent from the field, sooner or later that bus is coming. The bus gonna crash, can folks. That plane gonna end up in the Hudson because, listen, you you were the hunter and then you become the hunted. That's how it works. So, I I, I commend him for, for believing that about himself, but I ain't buying your brand, Kim folk. I ain't buying that. And we saw them little ugly white shoes you had with them little wings on the end of them too. Them old man shoes that you've been trying to sell. Can't fuck don't nobody want them. You trying to show them at the end of your documentary thing somebody finna boost your sales with that crap. Get out of here. But like I said, to be excellent over time, you know, you you only like in that situation, people only like stuff like that only you only survive in movies. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't really make it out alive in situations like that. So that's that's that, I mean that's that's my two cents. What do I think about the series overall? Yeah, I think it was all right. I think it was yeah. I, I don't think. Listen, it was interesting to learn about Dennis Rodman and and, and and from what we heard from Jordan. Now, if Carmen Electra was the only one that was in that. If Carmen Electra was the only one that was in the bed with the Rodman, Jordan would have said, yeah, he was in there with Carmen. You know, he said, I don't even want to get into what I saw in that bed with Rodman. Rodman was in there playing with balls, and it wasn't his prayer. I, I, Kimbo, y'all know I, I didn't came too long, too long, too long, too strong to be politically correct about this situation. You know, you do what you want to do. Just watch my shoes, but... We know you wasn't in there with just no woman. Carmen, and you know, Carmen, she, you know, so, you know, she ain't tripping what she was in the bed with him, Kimfo. That's, I, I, you know, let's call a spade a spade. You know what I'm talking about? We get somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, you know what I'm saying? It was a good documentary, but it, it wasn't what I was expecting. So, yeah, man, that's just what I think about that old situation. You know what I'm about? So, we're gonna move on, man. We're gonna move on and get into the meat of that thing on come back. And today we're going to be talking about imposter syndrome. I don't trust myself. If some people will be honest, um the reason that you have not got to where you are trying to go is because you don't even trust yourself. And so we're gonna delve into that, what the definition of it is, and how do people usually deal with that type of situation. So, yeah. I want to welcome everybody back. We're going to get into the meat of it. At this time, I want you to take a take the time to just kind of think back. Long, 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 long time ago, can folk. Where you know, things were simpler. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I'm just bull corny. But nah, let's get into it though, man. Uh welcome back, you know what I'm saying? And we uh we're gonna get into the meat of it. You know what I'm talking about? Uh we're dealing with trust issues and uh, more specifically imposter syndrome. I don't trust myself. And so 
you know, one of the things that, oh, so first of all, the one thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to get the definition of it, right? And so the definition is a psychological pattern in which one doubts one's accomplishments and has a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as the fraud. One more time. Imposter syndrome is a, is a psychological pattern in which one doubts one's accomplishments and has a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. Now, I believe that so many of us deal with this that it's not even funny. Like, if especially if you have dealt with the identity crisis of not having a father in the home, of not having a mother to affirm you, or, you know, maybe you just didn't even have solid relationships growing up. You didn't have good friends that, you know, actually told you, you know what, man, you dope, or you got, you know, a certain set of skills or whatever that may be. I think it's highly important that you have the right upbringing to not struggle with in your mind already thinking, I'm not good enough, I don't deserve to be here, and they're going to figure it out, and then they're going to boo me off the stage, or they're not going to listen, they're not going to press play, they're not going to support me, they're not going to buy the product that I'm trying to sell, they won't recommend this, whatever it may be. I mean, I think it's such an interesting thing because I think on, I, I truly believe on one level or another, I have dealt with that for sure. I think at most artists, you know, you don't want to put your art out a lot of the time because you are dealing with a, a gigantic identity crisis. Who am I? Do I belong here? I don't belong here. Well, why don't I belong here? It's because of the voice in your head. You know, it takes one time for somebody to say something and it to completely destroy anything or any hope that you built up in your mind about who you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to do, what your dreams are, what your goals are, what your hopes are in life. And it takes 15, I think it's 15 or 16 positive things to be said in a row to cast down whatever that negative thing is that you have dealt with or that somebody has said. That's a very precarious situation to put yourself in, you know, and I just want to tell somebody today, and, and and for those of you who know me or who have been buying my brand, y'all know I'm not a, the motivational speaker. I just have my, my thoughts about life and about certain things, and I'm just here to tell you that you are good enough to do whatever it is that you are setting out to do. Just do it. Just start. If they don't like it, so what? Does it mean you're not who you say you are or who God says you are? No, it doesn't mean that at all. It means that maybe you got to try a different angle. It means that maybe you just need to start over when the time is right. Maybe you were busy. Maybe life is just not lining up for you right now. Maybe it's just not your time. I think so many times, too, what we get caught up on is what Sally Sue got going on, what what Misty May got, got popping, and just because we see them on, on Instagram shining, just found out today that Joe Rogan, who in, who pretty much ushered in the interview podcasting style that many are taking on today, that he signed a $100 million contract with Spotify. He is leaving YouTube. He is moving on to greener pastures, to better things for him, his life, his family. And so let me let me take a little step to the side and say this. I love every single one of you, the things that y'all tell me. And I mean, let me see if I can't name all these people. We got TJ. We got Cole B. We got Jeremy. We got the other Jeremy, Jeremy Downton. We got Jeremy Butler. We got Tamara Culberson. We got TJ. I don't know your last name. That might be, the J might be your last name. I, forgive me. I just always knew you as TJ. So we got them. We have KB. We got Kenny Braxton. We got, um, my wife don't be listening to my podcast, y'all, so I can't even uh, big her up. We have Gabby. Love you to death. She sends me stuff all the time. Um, and this is super supportive. Has told me, Aunt Mo, you stay who you are. TJ, stay who you are. Colby, stay who you are. Right? 
So I, I am like I said, I'm doing this for them, and and they aren't the only ones. I just uh uh Chris, my boy Chris, Randy, people who share on a regular basis, those who show love, like y'all help me to not feel like an imposter. And for all of the other people who suggest what I should do, what I shouldn't do, nobody was telling telling um Joe Rogan how to do a podcast because. He said, this is what I'm going to do, and then he's going to roll with it, and it'll be what it is. I'm not trying to podcast like everybody in the world. I'm not trying to sit up and give you sob stories all day. I'm not trying to sit up and interview people all day. I like to get in my bag. I want to talk about what I want to talk about. And if I decide, when I decide, to add more mics, more headsets, to get a different setup, and add people to the podcast over time, you know, I have a dope vision on what I want to do. And since I am talking to my loyal listeners, I'm going to lay that out for you right now. This is all a part of dealing with me being exposed as a fraud. Am I fully equipped to do a lot of the things that I want to do, even mentally right now? No. But why am I going to stop myself from venturing into what it is that I believe God is calling me into? So it starts with having a dope podcast and, and getting and catering my podcast to the people who matter most, the people who listen every single week. I'm not trying to reach out for people who want to rock with me this week and next week they don't want to rock with me. Who cares? I, I'm not sweating those people. But for those who want to rock with Aunt Mo, rock with your boy. You know what I'm saying? So it starts with building a dope following. Not 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 people. That will come in time, but it comes from those faithful listeners who want to share the podcast every week, who want to share the YouTube, who want to get in dialogue, who want to help build my Patreon, because that's where I'm headed with this. I'm trying to give y'all dope content every week that's on my heart and my mind that I believe I'm supposed to give. I want you guys to then in return go join the Patreon. In joining that Patreon, and the link will be in the bottom uh, for, with that, I will then be able to create more content. I can add to the studio. You know what I'm saying? By getting mics and chairs and headsets. Then I can pay a videographer because right now, okay, I got the roadcaster now, so I don't have to worry about post edits. But now I got to get up and hit the button on the camera and, you know, figure out how to edit it. I've never done that before, but I'm going to do it, and I'm going to get y'all dope content, period. So I can get somebody to do that for me. Then from there, I can start doing skits consistently, short stories, films. This is where I'm trying to go with this. I want to be able to give y'all content just like Tyler Perry give y'all content, just like my boy Willie Mo Jr. giving you content. But I need people who believe in me enough that they see where I'm going and they want to jump on and join that Patreon for $5 a month. You can donate more, but if for as little as $5 a month, I already got blogs in there waiting for y'all. I'm adding videos. I'm going to have skits in there. I'm going to have songs and short. I'm telling y'all, but I need y'all to rock with your boy how y'all been rocking with your boy and let the money add up where the talk is. Let the shares add up where the conversations add up, and we'll go where we trying to go. You know what I'm talking about? So with that being said, imposter syndrome. People have to understand that in life, you're always going to deal with the struggle of not being good enough. You're going to deal with the, the dynamics of if you are qualified to be the person that you desire to be. That's just life. And the sooner that we can understand that and figure that out, we'll be able to get somewhere with that. You know what I'm saying? Because the alternative is to let everything that's inside of you die. Bro, not everything, bruh, bro, sis, whoever I'm talking to right now, not everything that you do in life is going to equal automatic success. It's just not the way that it happens. Some people get lucky. They go viral. They take off. They start a clothing line. They, all of that. But some of us have to start from the bottom and fight. Because cream is going to rise to the top. That is my mentality. You know that You know that there's a thousand people starting podcasts every day? I had to wait a month for this thing because it was on back order. 
Everybody named mama was trying to get a hold of this. But guess what? I'm not worried because I had people asking, hey, what's up? You going to make us wait a week? What we doing? Hey, did you drop a podcast on this day? Bless my soul. I'm not even capping. Like, y'all don't understand what it means for a man like me. Who's, it started with an idea to really go and start ranting about things that I saw that I didn't like, things that I felt strongly about to be able to get to where I'm at now. And there are people who say, you know what? If you were gone, I would miss you. If you weren't podcasting, I wouldn't have, it would be something less that I would have to look forward to. And that's the goal. I want to be able to give you guys something to look forward to. So don't not trust yourself. I said a double negative there and I hope it adds up to a positive. Trust yourself. Don't let the haters or the naysayers or the people who want you to be an imposter don't make them out to be right. Because when you when you don't, when you look down on yourself, when you allow the shortcomings and the, the, the stupidity of others, or even those who may love you, but the vision of what they have in mind for you, when when they try to force that on you, it's a setup for failure for you. Because you can't buy into what they believe. You can't buy their brand. Their vision is not your vision. So sometimes in you not trusting yourself, it's because you are trusting in others too much. That's all I'm like. I, I at this point, I've done so much research. Like on this roadcaster, Kenfo, you know what I'm talking about? I'm 10 toes down with it. You know what I'm talking about? I'm walking strong. I'm fat with it. I'm sumo wrestling. I'm legs big, fat, big rolls on them. You know what I'm talking about? I'm sitting down on it. You know what I'm talking about? I'm I'm squatting like like when chicks be peeing outside. I'm I'm down. I'm ten toes down with it. You know what I'm talking about? And so at this point, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me to argue with somebody about what my vision is. Sometimes we're arguing semantics with somebody, and the end result is me not trusting. The process, me not trusting the vision that I have for, you know, what I believe God has given me. This stuff, this stuff keep me up at night. I was up late every night trying to figure out how can I get this podcast going to the next level? How can I get this roadcaster? I, and now it's on to the next thing because there's a vision and we perish for lack of vision. I wrote it down, I made it plain, and it's still not done, but I'm just letting you know, keep going. The imposter syndrome only works if you keep all your thoughts in your head. You don't share, if you don't build a community of people around you that trust in you and believe in you, there are people who are going to support me that don't know me. They're coming. There are people who have been saying, Aunt Mo, I got you. We got you. Come on, just just keep going. Just keep putting it out there. This is good stuff. Just keep going. I promise you, I, we got you, Ant. I didn't have people give me the rally cry. So you can't not trust yourself. Like, wh- what's, the, what's the benefit of you not trusting yourself except all your dreams, all your desires, all your goals die in the graveyard? The richest place in America. Now, with that being said, let me say this. A lot of y'all is fugazi, though. You know what I'm talking about? Like, a lot of y'all, y'all fugazi. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all fake with it. It's always going to be some people that's going to smile in your face, stab you in your old back. Stab you in your old back, back, can folk. So, you got to take the good with the bad. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. Because this imposter syndrome thing, it's a real thing. You walking around with a fear of, Other people exposing you, and you don't even know what them people is about. That's an interesting concept. I, I, you know, it was all about, and 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 to kind of let you peek into what I got going next week. It'll be about unreliable friends, dysfunctional. It'll say, uh, I'm sorry, dysfunctional family and unreliable friends. We gotta we gotta deal with some of these relationships of of people who share the bloodline with you, but they not really with you. And we also got to deal with some of those people who 
They want to cheer you. They want to pat you on your back when you sell out. They want to pat you on your back when you when you didn't sign your first deal. But they wasn't sharing the post. They wasn't shooting with you in the gym. They wasn't donating no money to the cause. So let's first deal with the trust issues that we may have by looking at the people. No, not looking at the people. I'm sorry. Looking at yourself. Let's look at yourself and say, do I trust myself? Do I think I'm a fraud? Where did those ideas come from? Cause it, was it because I didn't have a daddy around? Was it because my mama told me I wasn't going to be nothing? I was going to be just like my, my, my uncle, which I don't got nothing against my uncle, but my grandma told me that when I was young. You know what I'm saying? And I love my uncle. He's he a dope dude. He's funny. I ain't, you know, please, let's not twist it in that way. But I'm just saying, you know, it's just some of those those dynamics of life that you have to deal with. Typically, the reason that you feel the way you feel or have the ideas that you have about life or about things that happen in life is because of the people around you. So solidify your circle and you'll be able to flourish. Solidify your circle. Solidify your circle and you'll be able to thrive. You won't have to deal with the idea of other people telling you you're good enough or you're a fraud because if you are if you know who you are, before you step into this thing, you know who you are, and then you got people around you who believe that you got something, that you're going to be something, and it ain't it's all love, it ain't hate, it ain't hoping that you make it to the top so they can ride your wave, then that's when you'll get what you're trying to get, and that's when you'll go where you're trying to go. I believe that 100%. So, yeah, man, uh, I, I want to, I don't want to, I'm not trying to put a cap on anything. Not on my goals, not on my dreams, not on this podcast. Listen, YouTube, YouTube, listen to me. Look me in my eye. I'm the captain now. If you want to give me that money that 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 um Joe Rogan left y'all for, I'll stay faithful until I get my hundred million dollar contract. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'll be the I'll be the cash cow because apparently he was the biggest grossing on YouTube hands down. And so that's a big loss with a, a hole that I can feel. So, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is, Kim folk. You know what I'm talking about? So, moving on. We're about to we're about to shut this thing down. You know what I'm talking about? And uh shout out to my boy Matt Mitty. This is his beat. I got a couple years ago as well. I'm just gonna show love to all the producers that have contributed. Uh, the the beat that I played during my sports segment was my boy Cash and Chris. You know what I'm saying? M O double M. It's their instrumental to a song called Awards that went hard. And I said, this is one of the hardest beats I've ever heard. I have to have it. Chris sent it over, and you know what I'm saying? I just appreciate all the people along the way who have showed mad love. It's worth it to me. And so, listen, momentous moment, man. Protect yourself. Uh, love the people that love you. This is who I do it for. From now on, I am not doing this for some new people that may not stick around. If you see the value in MO, you will stick around and you will become one of those faithful few. Um, so, if you want to get at your boy, the Patreon is live. The link will be in the description in the show notes. So, that will be uh, patreon.com forward slash Wayne's World Potty, P O D D Y. Uh, if you want to, you know, just send your boy some encouragement, you know, send me some info, send me some topics. You can email me at elevatedsense87 at gmail.com. Also, you can send me a voice memo or a message in the Anchor app. If you click on, if you search Wayne's World Podcast and you see, um, if you uh, click on the Wayne's World Podcast and you see the, uh, I don't know why, I can, Lord help me why I forgot all that. If you if you look in the as soon as you look at the Ways World Podcast in the Anchor app at the top it will say voice message. There we go. And you can be able to um, you know what I'm saying, just send me some feedback. You know what I'm saying? I have the option on here to take phone calls now, to do Bluetooth and Skype calls. So I, you know, I'm gonna start adding some of you guys in as well. You also can support, you know, you can send your boy some monthly through the uh, through the Anchor app as well. That link will be in the show notes. Uh, I'm not on here trying to beg. I'm just 
talking to the people who love me enough to listen. And if you can lend your ear every week, you can you can chunk your boy a little bread to, to, to get where we're trying to go. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or you know, Google Podcasts, anywhere that you listen to podcasts, give me a five-star rating, five or nothing, please. That'll boost me up to be able to be higher on the list. Also, um, we got a new logo coming. Y'all going to see all of this stuff. I, I, I love y'all. I thank y'all, man. Y'all know how we rock out, man. Y'all my people. I thank everybody who is 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 listening and who is watching in whatever respective outlet that I put this out on. Y'all dope. Just keep sharing for your boy. Keep supporting. Keep loving me. I love y'all. And as I say on every podcast when we end that thing, life is hard enough, so don't just live. <laughs>